Suddenly got a party, yeah? A bit of fun for saving the world. It's the least Andraste's Herald deserves for making things normal. I mean, is this for us or for her? Or, you know, him? Because I was there and I still don't know what's real. Couldn't it be his will? Well, what's the friggin' point of I guess you'd know, but still some. You mind if people still stay around? Or whatever? This is home. <laughs> Shut at you. I cry. I'm. All right, enough of that. Big freaking. It is said that Corypheus woke after his long slumber and found the world gone awry. He fought to bring back those days of magic and shadow, to raise himself as a god and set things right. Now, we are left with a scar in the sky to remind us of what almost was. It tells us that a great victory against Chaos was won, but left the world forever changed. Consider the mighty empire of Orlais, where Empress Selene remains on her golden throne. The civil war is ended and order finally restored. The Empress is unchallenged. But at what price? Blood drips from Selene's hands and all her court know. However, none are in a position to move against her. As Orlais heals and its strength returns, Relations with the Inquisition slowly sour. Icy receptions meet the Inquisition inside the Imperial Court, where most prefer that Orlé bow to no one, not even heroes. Many believe that when the Empire's fortunes wane once more, Selene will stand alone. The Grey Wardens of the South slowly rebuild in the months following the events at Adamant. They declare it time for the Order to emerge from the shadows, to join the rest of humanity in fighting their ancient foes. Rumors abound that they severed ties with their leaders at Weishaupt, and that a bitter war now rages between them. What becomes of Stroud is unknown, save that all news out of Weishaupt soon ends. Does the sudden silence indicate a battle within, or something? Far worse. One month after the defeat of Corypheus, the Chantry names Leliana as successor to the Sunburst Throne. Given the name Divine Victoria, she first declares an end to the Circle of Magi. The Mages will now govern themselves. She opens the priesthood to other races, declares support for the Inquisition, and rededicates the Chantry to the principle of charity. Divine Victoria is controversial from the start. Several new sects arise, resisting her reforms and declaring her rule a threat to the faith. Her response is as swift as it is deadly. Unity is maintained, but blood runs through the halls of the Grand Cathedral. Those Templars of the Inquisition who were recruited at Therenfall Redoubt are left with a choice. Some leave joining mercenary bands or the ranks of the Imperial Army. Most remain. Those who remain under the watchful eye of Commander Cullen become the core of the Inquisitor's personal guard. And what of the Inquisition itself? Its web of influence is felt in every hall. Through diplomacy and the trading of favors, it has gathered the power to shake kingdoms. 
I leave Skyhold now, knowing that power will continue to grow. The Inquisitor is a symbol to many, a leader of the changing world order. To others, he has become a target. They linger in the shadows, waiting for their day to come. When it does, the Inquisition shall stand ready.
searching for someone to lead me. Can you guide me? To... I knew you would come. You should not have given your orb to Corypheus, Dread Wolf. I was too weak to unlock it after my slumber. The failure was mine. I should pay the price. But the people... They need me. I am so sorry. I am sorry as well, old friend.